or a look at the visual side of a pop group for whom design very definitely matters. the identity of the group? The identity? Um, what paper have I just read? A bunch of old posters, actually. I don't care. We just do what we do, you know. I actually think it's the fact that we are four completely different people. That Midge is fairly traditional in his outlook on most things. And Billy's the complete opposite. Billy's totally radical on everything he thinks. And uh, me and Warren sort of float around somewhere in the middle. Warren's the quiet one. He's the reader on the band. And he's well into electronics as well. You can see there's some of his stuff behind me here. It's so incredibly complex, that stuff. So yeah, he, he gets into all that stuff. Chris and I tend to work on the stage sets and the graphics because we're interested in that side of it. But there's other areas that uh, Warren and Billy are much more uh, interested in than, than we are. And we can let them get on with, with that. And we, we take a back seat at that point. Right from the word go, we uh, designed everything ourselves. We never ever got into a situation where someone would be telling us... Ah, oh, well, that's because we're... Uh, I was going to say arrogant sods, but I won't. Well, we just have found that really the best people uh, to get across what uh, we're about is ourselves. You'd have to have someone go through everything that we go through, like uh, work with us, live, sleep, travel, all that business. Did I say sleep? I didn't really mean that. Freudian slip. Before they could understand us well enough to know how we feel about what we're doing and how we're presenting ourselves. We're the best people. I mean, we don't rule the other people out entirely. We come up with, say, uh, three or four basic concepts for stage design. We then go to professional stage designers and have them uh, organize our ideas for us because they have the expertise to say, ah, well, this is practical, and this idea you've got here could be good if we change this. Do you object to that? Sometimes they'll say, no, that's horrible. That's not, that's totally against what we're trying to do. Or, oh, that's even better. We wouldn't have thought of that. We use Peter Savile a lot, actually. Uh, for artwork on sleeves. Ultravox are very, are very easy to work with, really, because they have ideas of their own, and they're also quite receptive to other ideas. And um, they use me to, in a way, visualize some of the things that they're interested in, and I put in things that I'm interested in, and uh, together we sort of get a result. How important do you think the visual element is in the music business these days? Um, it's very important these days because, because pop, popular music these days is so diversified and so a group can use the image that it projects to try and give a direction to the music so um, a person in a record store watching television is able to identify with a particular sort of image in order to try and find the sort of music that they might like. Friends of mine have actually bought an album by someone that they never knew at all just because they were attracted by the sleeve and especially these days with fashion playing such an important part in sort of uh, 
young people's lives, the sort of design, uh, any, any modern design, will attract certain young people and uh, it can play a very big part in determining which records people can buy. With a lot of new bands, the record's design is actually more useful in promoting the record in the shop than the music itself. You've got four strong personalities and n none of us pull any more or less strong than anyone else. But because you're all going in a similar direction, it becomes like, it becomes another, it's like another person. And uh, I think we're all aware of that. I think we all like that. The identity becomes an abstract, an abstract uh, thing which the four members of the group sort of relate to. It becomes um, an image that they can use as a projection of themselves for a period of time. It would be almost impossible to come up with one corporate identity, one image for a group forever. But it's easy for them to adopt a particular image for a period of time, let's say for six months or for 12 months or for one tour or for one album. We do play tricks with people, you know, like on Monument, what you got there was an Italian architect's layout, which was the monument. And on the cover, we put the plan in sign elevation plan, you know, how they would draw it before they built it. And then hinted on it on the single, how it would look. And then when people came to the gig, there it was. I'd seen a stage play in the West End, which had quite impressed me. The, the, the set for it um, had really sort of made an impact on me. And I mentioned that to Midge, and he'd seen the same play. And so we were, there was one thing in common that we'd both been impressed by within the sort of recent time. And um, I'd also been getting very interested in architecture and how architecture could be expressed graphically and, and sort of be a springboard for design ideas. And um, so we thought that it would be interesting for this campaign to sort of work backwards and start with a stage set, to design an impressive stage set, and then gradually sort of piece our way back to the record packaging and the advertising, the marketing. The first proposals I think we came up with uh, and showed to the band were accepted quite enthusiastically. What I was unaware of was the technicalities of transferring the equipment and the stage set itself all around Europe for a tour that they were about to begin. So I had to have a crash course of stage management and the technicalities of lighting and the various ways that my ideas could be transferred into those practical means. When we began to actually do the sleeves, we had arrived at a fairly fixed idea of the shape of the building. So for the first record, which was to come out before anything else, a single called Reap the Wild Wind, we thought we'll create a sort of architectural Lego. We want to show what we're doing, but we don't want to sort of give the whole game away. So we used our logotype here, which is a vague symbolic rendition of the building. And then we used these key elements, which are like Lego pieces to hint at what we were going to do. So that was the first sleeve. Um, then the album itself had a lot more work on it. The album title quartet stuck all the way through. Sometimes working titles get changed at the last moment. So Ken and I had the problem of how to link this sort of monument theme to the title of quartet. And Ken suggested that we use the four different ways of rendering a building architecturally and drawing form. So we had um, a plan, a section, an elevation, and then an isometric, and we put these together to form a composition. We got a watercolour artist to actually render the stonework and the marble and the background, and we sort of dug out marble references, and, and this is what we came up with. So, so when, when they actually come to the gig, it's like, wah! They don't even bother looking at us. And, of course, associated with the stage set and the tour were merchandising things such as posters, badges, t-shirts, sweatshirts, programs, which all carried the same insignia. And the eventual spin-offs 
were a track that the group did on one of the records called Monument, a limited edition of, of prints that the record company gave away as a gift, a green marble picture disc, and eventually a Christmas card that the group themselves did. We just see everything as being very interlocking. Uh, there's no point in creating a certain kind of music if when you go to see the band perform live, the visual images jar or don't fit at all. I mean, that, uh, that just seems uh, totally unproductive. It doesn't work that way. We take great pride in making sure that everything follows through, even down to the merchandise. Like if a t-shirt is going to be designed, as they inevitably are, people like to have them, then we want to make damn sure that we're the people who are handling the quality control in, in the design department, so people are getting something that we like. After Monument being so big and actually quite difficult to get into certain areas, particularly in America, where we aren't really all that um, famous, <laughs> but some um, promoters actually lying about the stage size. It's very frustrating when you can't t take in such a big thing around and you can't even use it. What we decided to do was go back to the theatrical lighting that we used on the very first uh, Vienna tour, using the flashing on very, very brightly, like at the uh, final chorus of Vienna. They just absolutely dazzle you out completely. And you see, like, what we had when we had no money at all was Mitch would have one of these theatrical looking lamps just stood right next to him. Chris would have one, and I would have one, and the drummer had one. It was different, cheaply different. So what we decided to do on this was go back to that idea. Uh, but not only that, we just wanted to be rougher, less organized, more natural. The black areas, the unlit areas, are just as important as the lit areas to us. And what we've done on, on like the, the, the main sections along here, we're using a lot of gobos, which are sheets of metal with patterns cut out and slotted inside the lamps, so that you'll get maybe a, a sort of Venetian blind effect as the light is broken up. Instead of just having a straight flared beam, you're getting a, a staggered lamp or one with uh, triangles cut in it into like, various patterns. So from upstairs there, up in the balcony, you're seeing like a nice pattern on the floor as opposed to just like a wash of, of uh, light like most other people use. Uh, and also, it, it gives you a very sort of moody atmosphere as you're getting pieces of the bodies lit up, you're only getting a bit of the face lit up and the hands lit up at certain times, as opposed to just seeing everything, everyone all the time. We find it much, much more interesting. I like the idea of using different textures as well, using the scaffolding, um, not just to hold lamps, but actually for a look and a feel, and the netting, uh, which we found very, very difficult to get hold of. We actually had to uh, get this stuff made for us in Germany. Uh, have you ever tried buying, you know, a fireproof fishing net? It's not very easy. This is just nice and rough, you know, there's nothing spectacular about this. We are actually relying on uh, our good locks. Things can look incredibly contrived if you go over the top. You know, if everyone wore the same clothes and you know you all had your hair cut the same place and you know you all drove the same car, it would just look a bit like sort of devil or something. Like you were deliberately trying to contrive a look, an image, 
uh, which you're not trying to do. What, all, all we do is uh, go for go for the best in certain areas. We try and use um, interest and in, uh, good photographers so that the actual photograph itself projects an image and not just the four people all looking the same to project it. I mean, the four of us look radically different just now, and I think it's quite a healthy thing. But there's still a set feel to it all. As long as it all feels good, it doesn't really matter whether it's uniformed or not. Ultrafox really don't really like doing that many pictures. They're not a very picture orientated band. Um, like with all their sleeves, they have, they don't really have any pictures on them or anything like that. They keep their designs fairly simple. They might actually put a picture inside. I mean, on the last two singles, I think they did like a limited thing where they put a poster inside so that the kids can actually pull that out and use that, where they don't actually use it on the bag. But they realise that I think pictures have to be done. So when they do do them, they're very, very fussy about them. I'm going to fall over some. Okay, no. I most probably start off with my own ideas and then involve them in them, and then they sort of agree to how we're working the shots. Um, and then we shoot it, and we shoot loads of Polaroids have a look at the way it's working. I think that works. So it's not just head floating around. Right, right, so I'll bring you in a little bit more. I can have <coughs> the jacket around here as well. It's no problem. Yeah, just a little bit of white as well on the uh, traveling. Okay. And when they see something that they particularly like, and then we go into shooting it. Right, now hold it nice, steady. Nice, still there. Ready? Just square the head back up very slightly. That's it. So it's not really them sort of saying this is exactly how we want it because it never works like that. Because each individual photographer has his own idea how he wants to present the band by listening to the music, seeing them on stage, just all those various different uh, aspects of it. They wanted to use something from their stage show. So they decided to use some of the netting for the shot uh, to incorporate that in one of the shots. This first one, was with the netting, and also you can see this one is virtually the same. Then we did a series of individual shots around this blue, very much on the same sort of lighting, which is fairly moody in the same way that they sort of light on stage, bright from one side, fairly dramatic, so that's how we sort of kept it. Because they're all so different, you know, one's sort of fairly easy about it, you know, one will sort of say, whatever has to be, has to be. Somebody else will be very fussy about how they look, um, they're just so different that you end up getting so many different um, points of view that you end up, like for instance, if I get these up, just to show you, see on the black and white, for instance, so them all sitting down in one go and saying, right, well, well, let, well let's use this one or this one. They usually come in individually to look at the pictures, or you might get two of them in at one time, and they'll say, Mm, don't really like me, me in that one, don't really like me in that one, don't really like me in that one. So you end up with all these different uh, colours, which I think, in this case, the yellow is Billy, the red is Midge, and the white is Warren. So you end up with, on this particular sheet, there isn't one where anybody agrees on it. They keep themselves very much themselves. They have their own little projects they, they do. I mean, they, you know, they produce their own videos, you know, or direct their own videos, rather. I mean, that in itself is, is quite, a, quite a feat, I think. tend to go into the studio and make the records and, and that's it. They'll bring in an outside director to come up with a concept for the, their song, which just doesn't make much sense, really. If you've got the facilities and you've got the, the ability to control all aspects of what you're doing, I think you should exercise that right.
and we've been lucky enough to gain that confidence from our record company so we can go off and direct our own videos because they know we can do it now. It's a feel we're after more than a storyline. I mean, the last video had a very strong storyline, that was the strength of it. And I think everyone's expecting a dance with tears, Mark II, and they're not going to get that with this song. This song was written up here, and it's the, the feel of it, the music is very ethnic, Scottish, lilting, haunting melodies. And what we want is visuals to go with it romantic countryside like we have here because yeah, we've already tied that in yeah. with the, uh, the graphics on the single sleeve anyway yeah. it's mainly going to be like a an advert for the you know scottish oh, tourist board <laughs> it'll kill it <laughs> kill it stone dead mage tell us what you're up to at the moment yeah. up oh, to oh. year of water <laughs> uh, yeah. well because of the, the sort of foul weather conditions here which we sort of expected but didn't expect it today uh we're just going to do some random shots up there of, of couples walking about hand in hand and what we're actually doing is we're starting in the middle of the video somewhere because we can't do the uh, the beginning that we we'd planned for this afternoon so the people have already met the idea is it's like you know four guys meet four girls in this wondrous holiday hideaway and team up well we've already teamed up now so this is like we're just going to grab bits and pieces okay. until the weather gets a bit better Fab. next one I think the basic idea we have about directing our own videos is the fact that you get more or less what you set out to get in the first place. I don't think it's that difficult a transition from writing the music and recording it and producing it to actually making a piece of film that just enhances the music somewhat. And after that's what a top promo is. Okay, can you do it once more? A bit more smiling. I mean, you know, I know it's pretty early in the morning, but look, look as though you're enjoying yourself. Get on the boat stuff and the close-up stuff. Just a little pop picture, tiger's a girl. That's the idea. Yeah. How do you feel about actually doing the directing and the designing the, the, the image yourself when you're actually in it? I mean, is that a problem trying to do these two things? That's a problem if you don't have someone you can trust, like looking through the camera. What's happening is, is Louise is lining up with the boat. Okay, um, fine. So one more like that, and you stay by the by the pots this time, yeah? And we've worked with Nick for. I don't know, 20, was it 40 years now? Yeah, it must something be. Like, yeah, something like that. And obviously when we, we started, we didn't know any of the terminology at all. We're still very vague on that, that area. But uh, we can describe to him in layman's language what we want, and he can sort of instantly transfer that onto 16mm film for us. So it's great having someone like that that you can, you can leave sort of in control. But it's very, it's very difficult being on both sides, and you can't do it all the time. I mean, you do get tired, and it's nice to leave it to a director to go off and do it, if you can find a director you trust. With the director, I suppose, we have a little bit more structure to work to. Working like this, we are tending to make it up as we go along a little bit more. I think in a way anybody, you know, with three or four days and lots and lots of money can make something look very interesting, very flash. But this approach, which is a bit sort of raw, um, I think is more interesting and I suppose it's just a bit more dangerous, really. So what do you, do you think you're able to put in it by doing it yourself? Um, well, we save a few well, don't we? Yeah, we are now. <laughs> don't worry about that. Um, probably a bit of fun. I mean, the element of fun. There's no one cracking a whip and sort of forcing their ideas down your throat. How's it been going? Going not too badly, considering... Uh, the elements. The elements, yeah, yeah. The elements certainly throw you somewhat. But we're lucky enough today to actually see some of the scenery. But it certainly slows you down somewhat. We've had to scrap a few ideas and alter the uh, very vague... Things match the shape of the thing you're trying to achieve. No. I think, I mean, the idea that we're going just for a feel, I mean, it's quite a soft, probably over-cliched idea, and I think we've still captured that. Thank 
Sort of designs their their own lifestyle in a way, or the, the way they look. I mean, you know, um, but people's you know cars reflect their personality, or or you know uh, the the clothes they wear. You know, it reflects what they think they feel like that morning. You know, I feel like a scruff today, so I'm dressed as a scruff. Uh, and I think you actually do make a, a subconscious decision of, of what you're going to make. Just like you know, getting the right shoes to go the right trousers, and that's that's a, a design element you know and all we're doing is involving the, that design element into our work uh, I think that I think that's part of it I think the graphics and the designs that we use uh, help build um, a set image in people's minds of what Ultravox is and I think that's a, that's a good thing. Billy how important do you think all these visual elements are to the group's identity? About as important as this. Get it?